one of this kitchen makeover, I added these louver doors to my kitchen cabinets and they're definitely looking so much better. I've been having a really big think about what to do next. And I'm in this funny conundrum because this kitchen is temporary. This is how it is when we've moved in, but we're planning a really big renovation and this isn't even going to be a kitchen. This is gonna become an office. The kitchen is going to be all the way over here. Out there is where our kitchen is going to be. So with something so temporary, I'm just in this phase of like, I feel like I have this freedom that I can do whatever I want. And I could paint it bright red if I wanted to or anything like that. But I'm kind of moving into this phase of being like, it just feels a bit wasteful. So I'm kind of pivoting on this makeover. And what I'm gonna do is just do easier things that aren't gonna make too much of a mess, that can just make what I've got nice for now because hopefully sooner rather than later we're gonna move out we're gonna move into a rental and this is all gonna be ripped out and soon we'll have a fabulous new kitchen and that's really what I'm starting to think about because the future kitchen is gonna be really good and I need to start really thinking about what I want that to be so in this video I am clearing up the cupboards I'm reorganizing things trying to make it just a little bit more functional and easy for day-to-day -day life but while I do that, I'm really thinking about my future kitchen. I'm thinking about what do I really need? Because that one is starting from scratch. I can have it in any layout I want. What does that look like then? If I could have whatever I want, what do I want? How much storage do I want for plates or cups or whatever? So I'm thinking about all of that and I'm also starting to think about what is even loosely the style of our future kitchen going to be. So as I start to clear out the cupboards and move things around the kitchen and, and clean up and clear out, let me tell you about the future kitchen. So I feel like I like every style. I could totally embrace a really dark kitchen. I could totally embrace something really quirky and interesting. I've looked at colored marble. I've looked at all these crazy adventurous things and I feel like sort of everything appeals to me and I need to narrow down what I'm going to do so that I can focus. So what I know I want in our house generally is I want to collect really special things as I find them. I don't really like just like going out and buying everything from one shop or anything. I would prefer to treasure hunt around Facebook marketplace and find things that I like and collect it all so that everything I bring into the house when it's done is stuff that I really like, not stuff that had the fastest delivery for tomorrow afternoon kind of thing. So knowing that that's what I wanna do, I need to kind of have an idea of what is the style even gonna be? How can I focus on this? So for me to pick and focus on one design style, I've done something a little bit unconventional, but it's really, really helped me. It started with the fact that we have a blank canvas of a kitchen that I can kind of do whatever style I want, but I know that we have in our design white French double doors. So whatever I do has to make sense with those doors because that won't change. And I know that I don't want white walls and I don't want a white kitchen. So I started thinking about all the things that I wanted. I know that I'd like sort of a brownish sort of skin, maybe like the color of my skin or a bit darker, like that kind of family of colors, but that kind of color on the walls. And then I'd like sort of like rustic wood or something, but I don't really want it to look like a themed cottage. But I'm really not sure if this sort of like brown wall color and white cottage doors will look weird together. And I couldn't find any pictures on Pinterest. So guess what I've done? I've used AI and I've gone in and typed all of the things that I want in a kitchen and generated these images. And I'm pretty happy with this look. I've gone through a few iterations of it by changing some of the prompts to refine the style and get to a point where I think that, that it's doable. I know for instance, I really like these stone floors. I think they're beautiful, but they're just not practical with kids. So I need to have wood floors, for instance. So I add that into the prompt and then we see, yes, it does. Now, the two kind of styles that I found myself referring to to create these images is Wabi Sabi and Nancy Myers put together. And the reason for this is I really like Wabi Sabi from that like 
organic, imperfect kind of way. But I find it sort of too minimal in the way that I like the way it looks, but that's just not how my life is gonna play out with that like hardcore minimalism, as much as I really like the way it looks. And so Nancy Myers often has these more like maximalist, kind of cozy real life spaces that kind of, I think, feel more like real life, but lovely. So bringing those two together is what has created these images. And I'm into it. I know that this all works. Now, one thing that I didn't see coming in the design is these beams. I really, really like the idea of putting beams in because they kind of refer to like Tudor style. So when we bought this house, we nearly bought a completely different house that was actually, I think about five or 600 years old and it was a full on Tudor house with low ceilings and beams everywhere and everything. So beams were a really interesting idea to put into this house because with all of the design images that I made and even ones that I've come across on Pinterest, I find myself gravitating, of course, to the ones that have beautiful high ceilings or things that are completely not going to happen in this house. And so a challenge that I found myself having is how can I make this look really interesting when the ceiling height is only slightly higher than average? It doesn't have any of these grand architectural features. So how can I make it not feel like a basic white box? So I've seen a lot of renovations done where people really just make a big rectangular box at the back of their house and put a kitchen in it and that's it. And I want what we create to be a lot more cozy and interesting and have character to it rather than just a white box. So hence why I don't want to paint it white, but I also really think that adding some rustic beams will really add character to a space that is really a white box or it will start off as a white box. But I think that's what really makes it interesting, makes the ceiling interesting while still being a regular ceiling. It's not some kind of special thing, you know? So I feel like I've kind of narrowed down what I want. These images have really, really helped me focus and go, yes, I can look at this and recreate this vibe. So throughout this design, I'm gonna to continue to use AI to generate images as maybe the design changes or things have to change or whatever to like help me visualize what I'm doing and go, does this make sense? Is this a sensible decision or is it gonna look bad? You know, it's so much cheaper obviously <laughs> to create it with AI than to create it in real life and realize it doesn't work. So I'm really excited about this kitchen and what I'm gonna do now while we wait to start is I've got this theme in my head. I've got this vibe going on. So I can now start to collect things that make sense with that vibe. So I can slowly collect them as we progress with this project and then bring them all together. And it's not just going to be junk that's brand new that I bought yesterday. It's going to be all cool stuff. So I think I'm really going to enjoy that. I actually really like taking my time with this kind of thing. I know a lot of people like to just like click their fingers and have the thing finished, but I actually like the process of it. So I've got my vision. I know what the space is. I'm gonna do that. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna follow along this journey. I think I'm gonna to go to some antiques markets and also, of course, Facebook Marketplace. So speaking of buying things at charity shops and antiques markets and stuff, this lamp is my newest thing. Now, let me explain it to you. I wanted something in this area and I still want a mirror or an artwork on here because there's a hook there. So I think something along this space will look good. And it's just a good way of like, easily making this basic space like better with what we've got, you know? So I went to the charity shop yesterday. This is a really interesting thing to think about with the thought in mind of, I want to get a really tall lamp. I know that I want one over here, but I know that it needs to be tall because of this kind of space. And so I just went in looking for the tallest lamp they had, and this was it. And I looked at it and I thought, it's a bit shabby. It's a bit dated. I would never normally buy a lamp that's like oval and flat like this. But I kept looking at it and I just thought, oh, I'll come up with some project idea, like whatever. It, it is, it's the tallest lamp in the shop and that's what I said I was here to do. So I brought it home, plugged it in, 
I really like it. I I don't know why, but it's bringing me joy. I need to clean up the base of it and I might paint it. I'm not sure. But the top is a bit faded. It's a bit, it's just old. It's like an old tired thing. But actually the fact that it's like darker on top and lighter on the bottom, I really like. And it's like this orangey warmy glow. And it's, it's now somehow become my favorite lamp. So this is your sign to go to the charity shop and buy the biggest lamp there and just bring it home and have a look at it. Because in the shop, it looked like it should have just gone in the bin, but it's not that bad at all. And even the print, it has this little like leaf print on it. It just, I just didn't like it at all. But now I'm like, whatever, you know, it's better than having nothing there. Go to your charity shop and get a lamp. You'll thank me later. Here's some other lamps I bought at the charity shop. They're five pounds each. They also are just a little bit shabby. Like I didn't think that they were that special, but I was like, well, they're a pair, you know, we can do something with them. And once again, plugged them in, put them here. And actually they look so good. When, when you look at them up close, they look a little bit sort of grandma-ish. Like they're Laura Ashley. This one has a hole in it and stains. Like it's not, you know, they're not, they're not anything special but they look good. And the herbs, like I've got a vibe going on. This window is a funny spot because it does get a lot of sun. It's good for plants, but I can't really reach it. And just putting lamps here just made it something. It's just something nice. And like, it really works having the herbs here. Like I actually use them and I actually also water them, which is really important <laughs> and has been the reason why many of my herbs have died. But like they're just looking good. This area still needs a tidy up, but another lamp just makes the room so much nicer. Also, if you're going to engage in your lamp era, the first thing that I realized is what a pain it is to go and like switch on and off all the lamps all the time. So I bought smart bulbs. So literally they just turn on at about 5 a.m. and they, they turn off at about 10 or 11 p.m. each night. So I can completely control them on my phone and I can change the colors and you can dim it or you could do whatever all on your phone. So I will link below the bulbs that I got because they're really easy to set up and you can get them on Amazon. And so I've got to get one for this one now as well. So this one is also on a timer. Now I am conscious that I haven't finished off these cabinets in the way that I originally had planned. I wanted to put architraves around the top and I have bought a big sheet of wood veneer to put along the side. And I might get around to doing that. But since it's winter, I found myself really gravitating towards doing things that make the whole room feel more cozy. And I've certainly achieved that so far. But that doesn't mean that I can't progress with these doors a little bit until I get back in the vibe of wanting to do more hardcore things. So let me just take you back in time to when I was originally searching for what I wanted for handles on these. So now that I've got that idea about the color of the cabinets, the other thing that I need to do is find the hardware. So I want rustic. I want probably iron. I want something solid. I want something fairly large, but not too large. And I need four and I need it to be not expensive. So let's see what's available. Now, Liv did send me some things. She really recommends Rocky Mountain hardware. And unsurprisingly, it's very expensive. Everything she recommends is expensive. But if you are doing something more permanent and you have an enthusiasm for handles, this might be the place to go. Cabinet pull, starting at $103. I don't really want to spend that much money and I don't really want something new. I want something that has been pried off the dead body of some other cabinet somewhere. Liv recommended this website as well, a and H Brass London. I I'm just not sure of myself enough to justify spending this kind of money. So goodbye a and h as i'm browsing ebay for reclaimed handles something that i notice is all the good handles are in america like you would think that england has so many antiques and so many things there should be good handles about but they're all in america so if you're in america there is no excuse not to have cool handles on your things this is another website that she suggested in chelsea and she also recommended this one let's look at some more these are okay but not quite right i really like these. I like it a lot, but there's only two handles. 
This is a pack of 24 handles and they are gorgeous, but I don't need 24, so no. So you get the vibe of where my head was at and what I was trying to do. And I now have three options. So two of them were secondhand, I got them from eBay. And then the third option is an Amazon one that I just kept as a backup. And my intention is that I'm gonna keep these and use them for some kind of project. So it's not gonna be a waste. So the first one, and I think perhaps my favorite one is this sort of, I don't know, like a medallion style one. I, I like it, can't explain why. It looks old, it looks handmade. It's got good vibes about it. The second one also has this like face plate thing. I think that's what I like about both of them is that sort of detail. And then the third one from Amazon, this is not, this is not an unuseful handle. And I think, I think what this handle would be good for if this was the vibe you wanted, but you needed so many that you couldn't get them secondhand because they're just, when it comes to like reclaimed handles, or I suppose reclaimed anything, whether it's windows or floors or whatever, the more you need, the less there is and your choices just get smaller and smaller. So if you had a lot, this would be good if you needed just heaps, but I only need four. So I'm just gonna test which one I like better. So this one kind of goes like this and I like it, it's, it's quite interesting, but do I go middle or side? And it would be a pair like that, I don't know. And here's the other one. I think I like this one better. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna go with the middle because they've got this middle panel here. Like how many doors have that? It kind of looks like that makes sense. Yeah. I think these ones do have potential. Like they are very nice for the right thing. And what I've been thinking could be an idea to try, maybe not today, but maybe in the future because I don't think I've fully got this figured out in my head yet, but See up here, this is like just a bit of a, you know, it's just the side of a cabinet. I could put this here and then I could hang like dried, I could hang like dried herbs and stuff off it. Or is that getting a bit weird? Is that a bit too like 90s? I don't know. I feel like it could be cool. And like, it just makes this into a bit of a detail. The other thing I was thinking about doing in this space is putting this little friend who hasn't found a spot yet, we just put him there, you know? And like, that's something, but I don't know if it's quite right. It's an idea. It's probably not the right art for the right spot. I have another idea. I thought maybe here could be a little bit of a spot. I think this might make a little bit more sense. Like you could cover the, the light switch, but I, I, I need to use it. If I was feeling crafty and clever, I could put it on a hinge and then I could still do the light switch. But I think for now, over the tile is a bit of a vibe and I think it's good to be able to see this up close because the detail, the frame is really good. You wanna be able to see it up close. So here is a spot where it, you know, can be seen. It's literally at my eye level. And I think that might be where it lives. Okay, so we've got the two different handles here. This one's definitely my favorite. I think this one belongs on a side position. So like you just have to, you know, now that I've drilled holes in the middle, this one makes more sense. However, there's a tricky little situation here. This one comes through the back. That's fine. The other one, the other one isn't long enough. So I still think I'm gonna go with this one and I'm just gonna have to figure out a bit of a glue solution or something. I don't want anything too permanent because I would like to reclaim these again and reuse them in the renovated kitchen in some way. I'm now actually second guessing the placement of the handles. And I don't even know if I drilled holes in the right place. Should I actually have done them here? <sighs> so it's been quite a while since I started this mini kitchen makeover. So let me just show you what this looked like when we first moved in. After we had been living here for a little bit and had made some changes to the cupboards. And then when I added the louver doors, and now after this little mini renter friendly makeover that I've done. Most 
interestingly, what really is the marker of success in this is I enjoy coming in here now. I enjoy even, shock, cleaning up in here. It's a nice place to be. And I do attribute it all to the lamps. If there was only one thing I could redo, it would be the lamps. I know a lot of people don't think to put lamps in kitchens, but the reality is they all have power points in them, so there's no problem getting electricity. However, if you do have a spot in your kitchen or in your house altogether that doesn't have electricity, you can get some really nice battery operated lamps. And in my last video, I did some little makeovers on some really simple ones. So I'll link to that video below and I'll also link to those lamps below because they can be a really good little thing for a spot that won't work for a regular lamp. Now we've run out of time in this video, but there actually are some other really clever little things that I came up with while I was doing this makeover. So next week I'll be sharing my kitchen hacks with you. And most of these hacks I have never seen anywhere else before. They're not your regular hacks that you've seen that's just like telling you to do something boring. They're cool and definitely have helped elevate the kitchen. One that I came up with that I'm quite proud of is I have found a sneaky little way to have a hidden soap dispenser. So you can still have a soap dispenser easily available, but you don't have to look at an ugly jar. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that video because there's some good ideas in there. It's things that the world needs to know. People need to know. I want you to know these great ideas I have. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. Make sure you subscribe. And also let me know what you think about the design of my future kitchen. And if you have any ideas, any tips, n nothing too big or too small, because I'm at this phase where I can change anything. So this is the time. If you have an idea, if you have a recommendation, if you have a regret of your kitchen or a kitchen you've done in the past or a kitchen you've lived in, whatever, share it with me. I want to hear it because I want to take all the wisdom I can and learn from everyone's mistakes. So I'm going to work on these kitchen hacks and you will see them very, very soon.